Hi everyone, it's your boy Robert here and today I'm going to be giving you a tour of Yellow Mountain and Yellow Academy. Just a quick disclaimer before we start. The footage that I used to compile this video is from three separate occasions visiting the park. The reasons for this is because of a lack of access to some areas due to COVID restrictions and due to the complexity of the mountain. Yellow Mountain lies on the west side of the Xiang River and is visible from almost anywhere in Changsha. This makes the mountain famous and very popular not only among local people but also with people across China. At the top of the mountain you can see Meishi Lake and its exhibition center. You can find a viewing platform and a Chinese military radar base which you are technically not allowed to film. There is also a commercial communications tower and an area where you can find Kiro shops and food courts. Yellow Mountain is only around 5 square kilometers or 2 square miles. However, what makes exploring the place difficult is that it's not linear with regards to accessing its attractions. It has multiple entrances and many winding detour paths, so it's unavoidable running around in circles trying to see everything the park has to offer. Accessing Yellow Mountain is free and the park is open from 7 a.m. to around 10 p.m. at night, offering visitors a spectacular night walk with its intricate lighting infrastructure. Yellow Mountain is classified as a 5A tourist attraction and the peak of the mountain is only around 300 meters or 980 feet from the base of the mountain. There are approximately 970 species of trees and plants and the park incorporates themes of Buddhism, Taoism and Confucianism. There are many hidden Easter eggs scattered all over the mountain such as tombs and monuments of revolutionary leaders who helped overthrow the Qing dynasty, soldiers that fought during World War II and of course of PLA war heroes who fought against the nationalist government. There are also random buildings that are abandoned and random traditional gazebos and benches to discover. There are a few main highlights such as Chuan Shipu Lake which is usually overlooked and missed by many people because of its remoteness compared to other attractions. Even though this lake is small and man-made, I think it's a good example of Chinese architecture and landscaping. This is Yanlu Palace. It was originally built by vassal king Zhu Jianjian in 1478 during the Ming Dynasty. The temple's original name was Dongzhen Guan. The temple has been destroyed and rebuilt many times during history. Sometime during 1522 and 1566, Changsha Prefecture Chief Sun Fu ordered Li Kejing, a Taoist priest, to rebuild the temple. Between 1567 and 15. 1972, Zhen Shoufen and Zhang Yanghe, who were also Taoist priests, extended the temple. During the late Ming Dynasty, fire destroyed the temple caused by the Manchu invasion. From 1662 to 1722, local official Zhang Rui rebuilt the temple. Unfortunately, in 1852, the temple was destroyed again during the Taiping Rebellion, but was rebuilt by another Taoist priest called Xi. Jiahoui from 1856 to 1875. The temple was destroyed again in 1944 by Japanese bomber planes. As you would guess, the temple was rebuilt once again by two priests called Wu Minghai and Wu Yunkai. In 1966, during the Cultural Revolution, the temple was damaged by Red Guards. However, in 1976, the temple was renovated by local government.
Yelu Temple or Lushan Temple is another main attraction that is a must see. It's officially the oldest Buddhist temple in Changsha and dates back to the Jin dynasty around 268 AD. The temple was founded by a Buddhist monk from India and during the 6th century AD many Buddhist relics were enshrined here. The areas of the temple complex includes the Turtle Pond, the Mahaitriya Hall, Mountain Gate, Monastic Dining Hall, Da Xiong Hall and the Guayan Pavilion. The Buddhism sect followed here is the Mayana Buddhism and the main deity worshipped here is Guan Yin. The temple has a history of over 1700 years but unfortunately in 1944 the Japanese army destroyed most of the temple complex with only the mountain gate and the depository for Buddhist text being spared. At the base of the mountain near the park's entrance to Yellow Academy one can find the shuttle bus depot. These buses can take you around the park for 30 RMB or 4 USD. There are also milk tea shops, fancy restrooms and beautiful scenery. The main attraction in this area is the Iwan Pavilion, originally known as the Red Leaf Pavilion, but now it's known as the Autumn Admiring Pavilion. The original pavilion was constructed in 1792 but Unfortunately, just as the temple, it was destroyed by the Japanese army in 1944. The pavilion you see now was constructed sometime during the 20th century. It's said that Mao Zedong himself would frequently sit at this pavilion to do reading when he was a student at the nearby Hunan University during the 1950s. He even wrote a poem here called Qing Yuan Chan Changsha, which is engraved in four red poles. This pavilion is surrounded by by maple trees and in autumn attracts many people as all the maple leaves turn red. This is Yellow Academy, which is at the foot of Yellow Mountain on the east side facing the CBD. This attraction is not a part of the Yellow Mountain management and is privately owned by Hunan University. It is one of the four famous academies in ancient China. Yellow Academy was built in 976 AD during the Northern Song Dynasty and was one of the most prestigious educational institutions in ancient China. The academy has three major functions hosting lectures, collecting scriptures and books and conducting memorial ceremonies. The academy is a center of publication and research for the ancient Chinese language. Entrance fee to Yellow Academy is 50 RMB or 7 USD and is open to the public from 8 AM to 6 PM. In the academic complex one can find historical sites such as the Library of Imperial Books, Wen Chang Pavilion and the Xing Shui Sutra Proof Reading Hall. The Hunan University which was established in 1897 branched out from Yellow Academy. In essence Yellow Academy is the seed of Hunan University. Unfortunately, like most places of significance in China, Yellow Academy was destroyed and rebuilt many times throughout its thousand year history. One famous scholar who studied and taught here is Zhu Zhi, a 12th century Confucian philosopher. Another influential 12th century alumni that studied here is Wang Fuzi. Many memorial shrines were built to honor non affiliated academics, such as famous poet Chu Yuan from the 4th century. BC. Anyway folks, that's it for the tour. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.